Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is having a great day. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, for all you guys who live in New Jersey, it is like the end of the world outside. When I looked at my app, it started getting darker and darker. It was like 30% chance of rain. I, I literally, I think one of my floaties went three houses. When I you know, from pool floaties went literally three houses. So I have to go get that later, but crazy outside, crazy, crazy weather. So let's talk about the market, right? So if you watch the weekend update, uh, we were you know, kind of prepared for a dead cat bounce, right? Uh, whether it was gonna be today or it was gonna be tomorrow. And the reason why we, we, we talked about that, there was this little baby hammer, right? Again, if you study you know, or, or ever studied the earliest parts of like Japanese candlesticks, you know that a hammer is the most basic thing uh, as being bullish. So you got a hammer, is bullish and you got an inverted hammer. Where can I show you inverted hammer? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Inverted hammer is bearish, right? Now the next day it doesn't have to translate that way, but that's usually kind of a thing uh, that's happening. So the one thing that I, I did notice today uh, pre-market was that uh, even though the NASDAQ was down 80 handles and the Dow Jones was down about uh, 200 handles, what we talked about at, at morning strategy was that this, every, nothing was down this morning. If you look at uh, stocks were down, like every stock was down like 50 cents, a dollar or so. And pre-market on uh, Netflix, right, got an upgrade and was up like eight bucks, right? So you had one of these scenarios and I was like, well, you know, what? Okay, we're getting the little dead, let's see if we can get this little dead cat bounce today. Let's see how everything plays out. The problem with the dead cat bounce, and I kind of, if you, you know, just want a little more detail, what we talked about on the weekend video, a bounce is a bounce, right? We, we don't know how aggressive a bounce could be. Uh, 50 cents, $5, $3, 20 cents, we don't know. And that's why you're just trading a stock on a bounce is super duper hard. And what you're trying to do is look for daily charts, right? And we, we highlighted daily charts, uh, four daily charts on, on the weekend video that I believed, hey, if the market is going to rally, instead of trying to do a dead cat bounce, on an Apple or, or Rivian or some Microsoft, whatever the case may be, let's find at least the names that look good, right? That actually look good. And Netflix, the problem with Netflix was it gapped up eight bucks. And the last thing you wanna do, and again, you can see this right here, the last thing you wanna do, right? This is the pre-market highs, right? The last thing you wanna do is chase a gap and go in a, in a market scenario that's underneath the 50 day moving average and look what happened next. Not only did the stock fail that gap and go, it went from literally 248 all the way down to 235, right? So it's a very, very important lesson. Never gap and go a market that's in, in a bearish scenario. It's very, very rare that you're gonna get something that we want. So this was kind of out of the table. The other two names that we talked about last night in the video was uh, First Solar, right? Was First Solar. Uh, we talked about this uh, 36 and a half level, right? It finally broke above this 36 and a half level, went to 38. I still like this thing above 38. I think there's a shot if it starts breaking, start building 38, can get to 40. So we liked First Solar. is definitely one of the names we were watching. And ENPH was another name, but it didn't quite get there, right? Didn't quite get to this 23, 25 area. So the last one, logically, that was, um, that was in play was... Da 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 right? So the, the craziest part about trading, and, I, and I've said this for years and years and years, you don't need many charts, right? You, you don't need many plays. Uh, the greatest thing about trading the high beta names, right? The technology names uh, that has the, the, the greatest amount of average true range that if one lights fire, right? If one confirms, and you get the, the options market, the betting relentlessly in that direction with short-term expiration, usually something good happens, right? And that's the name of the game. And today we saw right from the word go when the stock was trading uh, in the 303s, uh, right from the word go, we started seeing 310 weeklies, 315 weeklies, one after another. And they weren't coming for, you know, 20,000, 6,000, 3,000. They were coming for, you know, several hundred thousand. One guy even came in 
uh, for the 1.1 million of the October 330s. This guy, he's not even betting this week's. So he's betting the 330 calls in this linear regression line. He's anticipating a move there. But more of the stories over and over and over again, we kept on seeing the same thing. And the most important part of when you're trading a stock and, you, and you're, you look, trying to dissect something technically, right? You need the stock to take out the previous day's channel, right? And start building on the previous day's highs. That's the check, right? That's the check mark. It started taking out this 30371 level. Then you need relentless option flow, short-term expiration. Check, check, right? We got that. We got that as well. And then we needed to take out the previous day's channel, the previous week's channel, and that's exactly what it did here off this 309 level. And at certain points of the day, they really started betting heavy, guys. Keep an eye on this. They really started betting heavy for the October 330 calls. And it makes sense chart-wise, right? You see this linear regression line? It's 330. But before it gets to 330, I do believe it needs to take out this whole range here, right? If you look at this whole range here, it's a pretty long range. It started out, I'm not even gonna go back to here. It started out in August, on August the 4th. So you're talking about a month and a half range. And who knows, maybe it takes it out, maybe it doesn't. But if we do have another day of buying, right? I, I don't want to use the word rally. We're not rallying. We're below the 50-day moving average. But if we could get another day of upward bias, right? Buy, buying pressure. Well, why can't Tesla attack the top of the range here, right? And if it closes off the top of the range, then you have a measure potential uh, going for this 330 level. And this is why this top of the channel here in the next couple of days is gonna be absolutely important. The one thing we wanna definitely keep an eye, if there is any type of weakness tomorrow on Tesla, let's keep an eye on if they do start coming for deep out of the money uh, calls with short-term expiration into weakness. That's also a great, great sign uh, to see that a strength. But this one's on tap, right? This one is definitely on tap. Uh, ready to go. Uh, and there's, and look, you're not going to get a lot of names. And again, going into tomorrow's session, again, we had a pretty decent bounce. Uh, NASDAQ up, you know, seven tenths of a percent, uh, Dow six tenths of a percent, S&P seven tenths of a percent. So again, you're not going to have phenomenal looking charts. So you have to do your darnness, right? Net Tesla, definitely on watch for tomorrow. Because if this thing confirms this channel here, this is going to have the biggest upside. And oh, by the way, Tesla has a mind of its own. So it doesn't need uh, the rest of the market to succeed. It just needs, you know, option flow. It just needs option flow. It needs directional bias uh, with the futures. And our job for today is kind of our job uh, that we did over the weekend. Try to find uh, the best value, right? The absolute best value we can find uh, that actually had a range that got broken several weeks ago that never went down uh, where the market got killed last week. And that's very, very important. That, you know, look, I, I definitely found some names, right? Look at a name like Pinterest, for example, right? Pinterest never went down, had a nice move here, uh, good consolidation. Look at the Pinterest's chart. If this thing starts attacking this top of the channel here, maybe this thing will wake up. Again, I don't know if it's gonna happen tomorrow, but it's something definitely to watch. A Sun Power is another name, again, in the solar space. Uh, again, look at, the, look at this, it got rejected three times uh, off the same level here. If Sun Power starts building above this channel, why can't it go to recent highs? So again, names like that, I definitely want to watch. But there's also a flip side, right? In case the market doesn't rally, you got to start looking for names that didn't rally. Like look at Square, right? Square is the only thing that held up Square today was the bottom of this Bollinger Band. If this thing starts building down below this bottom Bollinger Band and the market gets pulled, hey, this thing looks pre pretty good as well. Now, you also wanna take a flip side to the names, quote unquote, that are bouncing, right? They don't have the ranges like, for example, like a Pinterest or a Tesla, right? The top of the ranges, that are clean. You need to be a little bit more, you know, a little bit more uh, constructive, right? You need to be a little more constructive by trading it for cash flow. And that's when names like, for example, like Amazon, right? Names like Amazon on uh, the video take place. At least if we can find them, if we could see their strength in the market tomorrow and they start taking out today's channel and starts building off today's channels, yeah, they're, they're definitely going to be candidates we could play tomorrow. But they're, remember, they're candidates strictly for cash flow for bounces, right? There's no macro level that you turn around and go, wow, in the video, if it really takes out that level, there's a lot of airspace like you can in Tesla, right? At least Tesla, you can see the airspace, you can see what happens, where your measure potential is, uh, and where your pot of gold uh, ultimately is. So going into tomorrow's session, look, can we get another day of rallying here? Again, rallying. Can we get at least another day of bouncing? We'll see here. You can see here last two times we hit this orange line, we faded. 
hit this orange line, we faded. And if we get one more gap up into this orange line, which is the five day moving average, and we get faded, then everything that I've completely said it becomes moot. And then we start looking back to the downside. But again, that's the market we're in right now. We're underneath the, right? We're underneath the 50 day moving average. Uh, we were above it for two days and for two days we rallied. Then came the CPI engulfing candle for five days. We broke, we went lower, the Bollinger Band saved it. We had a little baby hammer. We got a little dead cat bounce. Let's see if we can stick it out to the five day moving average. That's it, day by day, uh, trade by trade. You don't have to reinvent uh, reinvent the atom or split it. Again, it's just trying to make sense of things uh, every single day. So let's talk about today's action. Uh, obviously not uh, a really aggressive day. There's only one stock that was aggressive and it was it right here. Uh, everything else was just kind of like didn't trigger or was a little too thin to trade. So Tesla, obviously the biggest move of the day, 304 needs to build. Uh, the first move was to uh, 305 and a half supply. It reclaimed the 305 and a half supply. Uh, and then you can see it, you can see by the action, a really, really big move, hit this 305 level, came in, reclaimed, went to almost 310. And you can see where the where we want to see it, where we want to see it for tomorrow. Above the 310, potentially can get to this uh, three, you know, 314, 315 level. Remember, you only need one. You don't need 10 of these things. You only need one. And obviously go with the one that has the biggest. Uh, measure potential. Uh, AI, not a big move. I still like this thing lower. Uh, potential swing, any close below 14. It went to 13.70, nothing big. OKTA, same thing. Uh, you know, I still like this thing. It really needs to close uh, below 58. Uh, Wolf, 121 and 120. This was a way too thin for me. I know some of you guys caught this way too thin for me. Uh, 121 and 123 and a quarter, big areas need to confirm. Here was Wolf, right? Here was Wolf. So it took out the 121, right? 121, took out the 123 and went to 124. Nice move if you got it, just way, way too thin for me. Uh, first solar, again, like we talked about, 136.50 uh, needs to build. Here was first solar, right? Again, you're not gonna get massive moves. This is kind of like a dead cat zone. So uh, 136 and a half went to 138. I believe we covered this thing uh, on the weekend video. ENPH never got to 23. Shopify never got to 31. Uh, JCI never broke 53. In the video, I lost a little bit of money. I think I lost like 60, 70 cents on, not a lot, but the point is it was a little bit weird. So it takes out that number, puts in a high of like 33 and change, retraces, takes out the 33 and change, starts going, stalls out, goes down. And then I look up, you know, I look up two hours later and the video, you know, is blah, 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 traded all the way up to uh, 3460. It doesn't even look like a big move, but the point is again, that's what the whole point of a dead count. So a little little scrape on the knee here, and uh, Tesla was obviously fantastic today. Uh, and the key question is again, do we get that one more day? But again, just to keep in mind, uh, the Qs watch these things off the five day. You can see here clearly how last time it got rejected off the five day and really started going aggressively lower. So if we test the five day tomorrow and we get rejected again. Be conscious, don't put on positions as you're getting rejected on the five day, and then we'll start kind of reversing course and seeing channels back to the downside. That's it, we got our game plan, we're ready to go. Remember, you don't need to trade every single day. Your process is not gonna be highlighted and respected every single day. The most important thing is understand the market's open, right? It doesn't give you uh, every, it doesn't give you an opportunity uh, to put yourself in a position to win, but when everything lines up and your process gets highlighted, that's a completely different story. Guys, God bless. Stay safe, stay warm, stay happy, stay in business. I'll see you guys tomorrow.